Anyway, what's up, guys? John Sintez, Cutter Nation podcast, Brad Birdo guesting in, Eric Minshaw. Uh, first of all, if you haven't liked and subscribed to the podcast, we are on all platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, everywhere you can watch this, listen. Please follow us. We will be putting out an edited version of this a little bit later. But as we're coming to you live, don't forget to grab some hats. We still have our custom GS1 gloves available if you'd like to order one of those. Shout out to our main sponsors. I'm going to hit it over here from the board. We've been working hard. Triple Crown Jewelry. Use code Cutter Nation. Get 20% off. BP Zone. Brand new one. I'm going to have to talk to Eric about this. A all metal box for a strike zone with a target. They were at the ABCA spring loaded to handle the energy going into it. So going really well there. And then also Lefty Swag Bats, the weighted bat trainers for hand-eye coordination. All of you guys that are helping us do what we do here at Cutter Nation and help sponsor the pod. Thank you so much. But without further ado, our guy, I've been waiting to have a conversation with you. We've been following oh, yeah. each other for a while. We we kind of linked up almost in, with the pitch logic situation as that has changed, unfortunately, as it goes. And you and I can talk about how that went. Um, but, you know, I, I see you guys as, you know, on the science side of and the data side of, of what we try to do here as well. And and so I'd like I like to learn stories from the beginning. I think things get there a little bit more organically, but also it allows our audience to to hear from you of, of, of what your your process is. So w- let's start off a little bit of, of, uh, of who are you and, and and what are we about? Well, great. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm glad we were able to make this has happened today uh, again a lot of admiration admiration from where we're at here in cincinnati can't wait to come visit you guys out on the west coast too that'll be awesome one of yeah, your sure. place and, and see how you do things uh but yeah for us i mean we we started out uh you know several years ago with just um i wanted to approach like pitching lessons specifically uh, we didn't want to do a lot of other things at the time uh, things were changing in the in the pitching world there wasn't any rap soto yet. There wasn't a lot of data, but how we were approaching movement and function and just talking through those things was changing. So I took a different approach. I started a company called the Sensei Throwing Club. And uh, I didn't realize that there was going to be a bunch of uh, axe throwing clubs at the same time. So we get people walking through the door looking to make appointments to throw axes. But, <laughs> but uh, eventually, <laughs> right. But eventually our, our business got really good, and then um, I've, I've, I got a new partner, and he was really willing to go that extra mile. And it's like Kyle Bodie always says, like, everybody wants to talk about this stuff and do this stuff until it's time to write a check. And, you know, none of, none of what we do is uh, uh, is everything's expensive. So I got, yeah, I got I a new partner, and he was willing to stroke the checks. And, you know, we became quickly the largest in the region – as far as, I mean, there wasn't even, I mean, we have Xavier University, UC, Dayton, Bowling Green, Wright State, uh, Northern Kentucky University, UK, all within just a few hours, and nobody was using what we were using. So um, we put our flag out there. We started really going data heavy, started getting those certs when they first started coming out, uh, really linked up with Rapsodo early. Now we're big into TrackMan, and I'll tell you what, um, you know, we're 800 clients strong right now just because of what we do and how we do it. Um, and and we just keep going forward. We don't, we don't look over our shoulder. It's awesome. Yeah. It, um, we've, I've been following you guys for a while. I, I really want to get to the in-depth of the complete process because we're, we're track man. You know, we talked about pitch logic. Yep. Uh, we've been talking with a company called Valves about some force plate stuff. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and some things from there. Um, which to me, like growing up using your legs, I don't know if I just got a better education from some people or some stuff or I stumble on some things, but I argue with those guys all the time about certain things, especially with some of our big league clients. And I'm like, look, you cannot tell me about the feet right now when the hand throws the baseball. I need you to understand it is a translation thing, right? It is a process of articulating the ball off my fingers as I'm trying to rip a cutter on the outside black as hard as I can. But if I miss, Brad Birdo's going to hit it. You know? <laughs> So, you know, I think for us, that's where Brad and I has always vibed was like the data should turn into um, the idea of Uber, Mm -hmm. uh, which is I love the idea of like what Uber did to the tech world and the app world where they like tried to make it a seamless experience where there was no exchange of money. Right. And so that 
that was their thing. They wanted you to go on the app, do the thing, you get in the car, you get out of the car, you say, see ya, and then it's a seamless experience. And that's what we try to provide here at Cutter Nation with a lot of our stuff with data and video and live streaming. And there's a bunch of things that that um, we use. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested for, for what you're, what, you know, we've evolved in and out of yep. a lot of different technologies as well, but besides TrackMan, what's your core go-tos on, on your tech? Well, every, Everybody here starts with an eval. Uh, no one is allowed to come in and, and, and throw uh, on a consistent basis as far as a client is concerned without being evaluated. So, you know, they get full functional movement screen uh, testing first. We need to see how they move because we can't ask an athlete, we can't ask anybody to to try to perform a certain way if they can't move, if, they, if they're not free and easy and able to do that throughout their delivery. Um, and, and we have a lot of position player clients too. So it doesn't matter whether you're shortstop, a left fielder, or we get a lot of catching business. Um, if, if you have, uh, if you have a lot of issues with your movement patterns, a lot of restrictions, you're gonna have some deficiencies along the line. So we have to identify that first. Um, we've been working with uh, ProPlay AI for really since the beginning, we were one of the first 10 day, uh, beta testers uh, in the country. And uh, we, we, we were as well. Yeah, exactly. We were as well. Yeah, there was originally eight and then there was 10 and I heard that you guys yeah. were, were there and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. They're going to get some good stuff to work with. And uh, yeah, fortunately, we, um, you know, Zach Day lives here in Cincinnati and Zach's very involved. And, you know, a lot of times they'll come out to our place and want to show us new things and talk through our process to help it get better. So really, really synerg synergistic uh, relationship there. So we put um, we put our pictures on that and we, we kind of really knock off the low hanging fruit that way. And I, and I tell clients, this will tell us everything you've learned to do right, but it's also going to show us everything that you need to work on right away. Um, and it takes all the guesswork out, all the eyeballing, all the BSing guys, you know, all that stuff's going away. Um, we do like to get some TrackMan data because we like to see the end result of, okay, here's how you're throwing now. Here's how your pitches are coming out of your hand now. And we, we like to have the discussion too, and I'm sure you do the same thing, is the ball doing what you think it's doing. I can't tell you how many guys we've worked with, you know, they misidentify pitches or they say they're throwing a slider and it's a curveball. It's usually, actually usually the other way around. They, um, you know, why, why is their change up flat? You know, those types of things. Because we want to see how, you know, through the delivery from, from external, um, you know, to internal and watching the hand kind of you know, start to pronate. How does that ha happen for the body? How does, how does it unfolding? And is, is what we think happening, is that really happening? We really want to get to that beginning baseline to the end and figure out, okay, here's where this guy's slot is. Here's what we believe his natural arm slot is. Um, and how do we work with that? How do we supply power to that hand? Like you said, the, the very, we, we, we called it last touch technology years ago. We want to get to that last touch. When we're ripping that seam off in that very last touch, are we going to be able to execute what our brain thinks is actually going to be able to happen? And that's, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a reader's digest version of our, of our process because every single client is different. There's a lot of things that go into each person, but everybody gets those pieces for sure. Um, yeah. You know, and as we get into more complicated stuff, um, you know, that varies, of course. I mean, we've, we've got some athletes in here that coming off injuries and, you know, we, we like to find out the why. Why were they hurt? If we can, if we can determine that, sometimes you can't. But we like to look if there's indicators, things like that. But we really try to dive into their their body, body and emotion, and and really just try to figure out, you know, what's what's causing them to move the way they move first before we get into specific mechanics. Yeah. Are, do you still use Pro Play AI? Oh, yeah, every day. Oh, really? That's interesting. Ours, ours failed a long time ago and really? we couldn't get back. Yeah. And so then I reached back out and then it just like, I just couldn't get a hold of anybody, which is funny because now I found out who actually designed yeah. it is another company called three motion yeah. AI. Yes. And yeah. so we just, we just got with them and they just sent the beta, uh, their beta version to us. And we just got on that and they actually have an assessment protocol for strength training and for swinging too. So it was interesting to watch oh. it. Still not, still need a ton of light i right. noticed that we have like really high grade lighting in here because i understand the track man and all stuff from in there yeah and it's not perfect but and or like uh we 
Our TrackMan screen is on the wall behind you throw. And if you come set with your hands up by it, it goes nuts and starts drawing <laughs> tornado green circles <laughs> by your hands. And awesome. we were like, we were like, what's happening? You know? And so one of our guys like was trying to throw and he's like, dude, I'm so distracted by whatever this thing is over here. I'm like, yeah, that's obviously a flaw. We need to maybe they need to let somebody know a solid background or something, you know, from in there. Yeah, we've had some good fun. conversations with Three Motion. We we want to try out yeah, because they've they've done some amazing work. I mean, they do stuff like even in the workplace. Yeah. Like, you know, how people are lifting and boxes and things like that to make sure they're utilizing their body correctly, which is which is amazing. But I mean you think about it, that's a big business. That's big business sure. to keep your guys operating. So yeah, we're we look forward to that as well. I think that'll be a, a good transition. So with that the AI stuff, right? And you, um, Berto and I had talked and, and, you know, um, I recently, I feel like I achieved something where we have a guy that reached, you could consider it a hundred, but 99, nine, he put his name on the top, the MLB draft league velo board. Um, we call it hacking your way yeah. in the game. And, um, and, and he just went out there and did his thing. One of the biggest things that we had noticed him was hand speed, which was one of his measurements that I really want. And unfortunately, unlike pro AI, where you could upload uh, native data or I mean any video into it, you have to do it through the app with three emotion. I just lit up their team sure. about that. I'm like, sure, yeah. I, I got time for my phone to be stuck <laughs> processing for four minutes, dude. Like we got to figure that out. You know, yeah, I was no, like, absolutely. Kind of like, it's got to go into the background. I don't care if it eats up the process of my phone, but I should be able to leave the app and it should be able to do its thing, you know? Yeah. And they were like, okay, well, we're working on that. I'm like, all right. Because I'm like, you don't understand. I'm like, I'm not doing a one. I mean, we see uh, yesterday. Let me see what our schedule was. I think we saw 57 people yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we're really turning over numbers. So what we're doing, we're actually moving to a bigger spot too. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Heard about that. That's awesome. We'll have more space to, to get in there. Yeah. For sure. So, um, what what is your favorite metric that you do get from Pro AI? I think uh, it's a good question. I, I think it varies by age. So, you know, the younger guys, I like to see um, really how their their torso is moving. So maybe if we get like you know their their hip speed, etc., their torso, how that's kind of moving is if it, it, you know whether it be three point eight miles per hour or four miles an hour, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, as we get as, as we get a little bit more towards the older guys, um, I really start looking for the data about uh, how the external to internal is really moving, where they're making that energy, how fast the arm's moving. And I also like to use the graphs and, and make sure that the peak is right before, you know, at certain areas, like some, you know, so we'll look for where the hips are in relation to foot strike and then how much energy is being produced at max external. And then I also want to see uh, probably max extension at ball release, just to find out if they're actually the graphs are actually peaking at the right time. Yeah. Because the the score, the hundred percent efficiency, and all that stuff is can be kind of misleading. But we want right. to actually see when the body is really making the most energy and is it making it at the right time. So a lot of the numbers up there are great. You know, they they have their version of you know the hand speed and and all that stuff and and. Um, and it all works really well. And I, I tell clients all the time, I said, not one of these pieces of information means a whole lot to me, but all of them together do. So, right. you know, when we kind of piece everybody together, we have to go, hmm, okay, that makes sense. Um, you know, if a, if a kid's coming in and he's six foot four, 230 pounds, but he's throwing 75 miles an hour, but he's only got 20 degrees of hip to shoulder separation, well, there's a clue, you know. So it doesn't tell you the whole story. Um, but then you start putting them all together, if, you know, if their deception's wrong or off because they're opening up their front shoulder so soon, they're showing the ball to the hitter. There's a lot of indicators there. But I'll tell you what, I do use a lot to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. Um, more so probably the last six months. Uh, we really kind of, we really kind of look at that torque. We want to make sure that that newt meter torque are in line with how old they are, how big they are, how hard they are you know, throwing, because we've had some guys come in that have been really off the chart and we knew they were at uh, immediate injury risk. So that helps yeah. us, you know, naked eye, you can't see that. That helps us get them into a better throwing program. Uh, and, and honestly, that's where we really want to get into better motor mapping and motion mapping for them. So they have a better uh, throwing pattern to work with. But th that is a really, really good, I think it's, it's probably saved a half a dozen or so kids here in the last just even a few months have come in with super high, Pork numbers, um, 
on their elbow and it's, it just probably wasn't safe. So we were able to help them immediately. Okay. okay, so that brings me to a very controversial idea that I want to ask you about because I don't get to talk to Jedis very often and I like talking to my Jedis. That's why I go to the ABCA too. Yep, um, I love the idea of what the hitting guys do and we should do this. They did that like separate clinic thing where everybody's talking mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um i think we should do a pitching one like that too because like when we go out there we want to i we set up a thing where we did uh we got a shout out spirit airlines for <laughs> just ruining our process to nashville i really appreciate you guys um Thank God I could, <laughs> but could if everything would have if everything would have gone like it was supposed yeah. to we would have gotten off the plane grabbed some food we had a high school pitcher catcher clinic set that night in south in a, in a facility down there okay. that we were friends with that we were going to do and then after that we were going to party and run a live a Bennett, live ab clinic right afterwards and i don't know if you know this but i have about 185 pitch capacity and so like and i'm 37 and i don't like i'll start i think i at the last so i'm a sparring partner yeah. that's how i describe myself to the hitters yeah. right i can just Whatever shape you want to throw, we can okay. party. Like I'm still 85, 88, but but let me tell you, Eric, I blow 84, 85 by more guys because I have seven foot three uh, release height wow. and seven foot five wow. extension. Okay. Yeah, and you're so on top of them. Our boy, our boy Eugene from 108 is here, and we were doing stuff, and he and I fight all the time on this stuff, and I love it. I love Eugene. Matter of fact, I kind of accidentally he's, he's, he's called him out. I know I accidentally called him out because he tried to his pimp the finish thing i was like i think the dominicans got you on this one my friend like i don't i don't want to do it but i play with like 10 of these dudes and they call it conio termina and right. i know what that means mm -hmm. that is not what you know but anyway that being said you know just to debate over the idea yeah right like dr andrews told me to my face and his whole team said i'd never throw again and i was like but i broke my elbow like it's a bone yeah. i don't understand you know so so me still throwing is just like, you know, shout out to John Heisinga. He's the one that actually, you know, he has, I don't know if you know this, but John has 11 screws and a wire. No, I didn't know down that. Down. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then like, yeah. and he's still, and that was my like, wait, 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 wait. I got two. You got 11? Wow. I can throw. Yeah. Right. Can, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no yeah. way. And he's still ripping to this day if you watch him, you know? Um, and he's awesome too. But, you know, what I really see controversial, especially when you say torque, um, and the amount of time that the elbow and the arm is going through the torque mm -hmm. zone, which is one of the things that I picked up from that right there. I think it comes down to what we call the American figure eight and the Latin figure eight, which is where the American figure eight is thumbs down, where the arms go, right. and then everything kind of works yeah. together, while the Latin figure eight is definitely the opposite. You definitely see more of a high front side, hands moving in opposite directions right. type idea to really load that backside into, you know, into that load on the shoulder, right? Right. So is is that something that you're seeing over there? Because we see it all the time. Like, it's like the first thing I see. Well, we call it your old swing up kids, yeah. knock on the door, Cobra, whatever you want from there. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a million, like, different ways to say it now. I mean, I, I think um, the pocket path, there's all kinds of, you know, really a good terminology. And I agree with what you said. When I was with the Pirates in 19, uh, we had Latin spring training at our facility while the Pirates were redoing there. So we had an extra 100 players and every, and we would finish our spring training and then we would work with the Latin guys and, and just exactly like you demonstrated, you know, high front hand, long loop in the back. And, and I kept watching all of our instructors. They taught exactly the same way um, to every one of those pitchers. So you would see it just like, it was like rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Yeah. Very, very rarely did you see a guy that had a, a different type of delivery. But um, did you get any terms? I, I have a term for it that it was given to me, and I've talked. I four guys that threw a hundred, either from Venezuela yeah. or Dominican, and they they have a name for it. I just wanted to know. No, I never, I never asked. No, uh -uh. Pistola. They call it Pistola. Really? Oh, that um, makes sense. Yeah, it literally, it literally looks like a gun. You just stand like this, right? And it's like vertical forearm, whatever you want to call sure, it. Sure. They call yeah. it Pistola. Huh? Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I'll, I'll I mean, homework that's, on that. I, 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 no, see, I never such, asked. So. Yeah, I'm like the indie guy because so I break my elbow, no affiliated, doesn't get drafted, two and a half years, surgery, figure it out, go to the Pecos League, need a dude that gets me to invite spring training to Mexico, yeah. and I just go ball out and then play there for like seven years. And like summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, starter, closer, whatever. And I had figured out some stuff that like, I'm going to give you a little piece of something that I, you know, I like I said, I don't get to talk yeah. to you that often. So I want to say something, but like one of the biggest things besides that 
pistola was your arm can't hit your body. And so like, if you, I don't believe we exactly know how Tommy John happens. I just did a research study with UCSD where they measured the UCL distance as I threw mm-hmm. and it got longer as I long tossed and then got shorter as I got on the mound. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And I think that yeah. is because my, my arm has space to clear past my body. Sure. sure. And so I have maximum follow through distance and I just never stress my arm. Is that something that sounds yes, interesting very to much. you? So I'm part of a team called the Tommy John Project. I would love to learn more about that because, <clears throat> you know, I don't think that any one of us can pinpoint a single reason, but we're all human. So I had, I, right. had a, I had a doctor that we work with here. He goes, Eric, none of us have MRIs for eyes. So we can't see into the elbow for that particular person to see what's causing it for him. Right. But we do know that there's, there's a whole bunch of factors and it's just like a pie, you know might be 30 percent of a factor for you and it could be five percent of a factor for me right like you said you've got room and space well who knows i mean the guy next to you i mean brad may not even have you know he may not have that right i mean and there's right. guys walking around without ucls that are throwing so <laughs> <laughs> right so i mean it, 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 there's so many variables but what i like is the pursuit the pursuit of trying to find out really does lead us to a lot more information as long as we're not trying to make everybody look the same, and as long as we're not trying to pigeonhole everybody, if we can get more information and learn how to handle the guy in front of us, like for that's a really, really big thing in our academy. I always tell I always tell our guys work with the guy in front of you, not who you think he is, not who you want him to look like, not who you were. You work with who he is, because that, that's, yeah. that's the reality of the situation. For sure, yeah, I could I couldn't agree more. I mean, we don't. The, that is probably the only thing that we do change is teaching throwing from the bottom is yeah. what we call it. And yeah. I just see the health go yeah. through the roof right. when I see people, yeah. you know, starting from that position. Actually, yeah. All of our stuff is done from, from the feet. We look whether they're landing everted, inverted, whether the back foot's moving, whether they're rocking. Um, you know, I, I had a, a, a Palooza like, man, I can't remember what year. It might've been 19 and 20 possibly. Might have been 18, 19, I'm not sure. But um, one of the guys that I got hooked up with there um, is is one of the world's leading podiatrists at Vanderbilt. And he came in and did a tremendous presentation. And he talked about the the ankle instability on your on your plant leg. And, or, um, I'm sorry, on your, your back leg. And right. he said that every time that your ankle shakes or, or a little bit, and you see it with guys, they start to raise up a little bit. And there's, he said, your nervous system – thinks that you're like slipping on ice you're doing that <laughs> oh shit he said and really then from there on your command goes to 50 50 because right. your nervous system may not be able to recover enough by the time you get the foot strike to actually calm down and rotate you so that's we, we pay a lot of attention to that back ankle that back foot and you know yeah. and and it goes along with the when you go back to the fms screen getting their IRER, their hips, and are they even set up in the right place? You know, a lot of guys are right up against the rubber. No problem if you can do that. But we got a lot of guys that they don't have the ability to get into a hip hinge and maintain any, like, external with their back knee. So we preset them a little bit. And right. then the world opens up. But, right, right. you know, who, who would have thought little Josh Hader, talking about Little Josh Hader for the oh, translation. Absolutely. Yeah, you right, know what I mean? absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, getting into that, without that, uh, we've had, and I'm sure you have too, we've had so many college pitchers come in. They're, you know, 88, touching 90, can't get over the hump. And I can't tell you that we've even worked with one or two of those guys in the upper half. We work with their lower half, and the next thing you know, they're, they're throwing threes, fours, and fives, and they're – breaking ball gets better the command with their changeup gets better because they have this great platform to throw from right and i like that that's like oh oh my god like where'd that come from um it's like well you were always able to do this you were just landing goofy i mean you you landed with almost zero stability and it was a crap shoot for every pitch so i love how i love how you said that too landed that's like we we you know we think it's a little bit more gymnast type stick it really like you gotta stick that foot it can't move you gotta be as strong as you can on yep. that you know the Verlander hyperextension, everybody debates on how that happens. But, you know, you, like I said, it, I've just played with so many guys that threw 100. And, like, even what you're saying now, like, they don't know where their arm is in space. You know, that's why I, I was like, hey, in do you know where this is? Everybody keeps talking about this. Yes. And they're like, no, I have no idea. No idea. I'm like, okay. 
my arm's moving way too fast through that. I'm like, okay. I don't know why we keep looking at front foot strike with our foot right here then, because this, I understand the timing. I understand the, the conversation that we're trying to have that, but myself and all the guys, that told, we were just like, I don't, I don't feel that. We're I don't know where that is. We're making a lot more adjustments now with, you know, we're looking at stride lengths and we don't try to manipulate stride length a lot unless we feel it's short. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and, and I, I just tell guys, I said, you know, and I give it to them this way. So they, they understand exactly what's going on when they land. I said, I need, one more foot length of your foot down. And we're going to show right. you how to do that. You're not going to stretch for it. I'm going to show right. you how to slide your ass down and get down there. Right. And, and you know, I know you, in the old days, we used to mark it off and walk, you know, like we were doing yards and stuff. And it doesn't really work that way anymore. Obviously, it's, you know, when the pelvis evens out, let's go, the front leg comes down and it's there. But still doesn't mean it's 100% right. So we're getting better results by getting the guys to get a little further on the guys that are short, getting them to get down a little further because yeah. during that time they are getting their arm in space. It's right. turning upward right. where right. we want it to be by right. microseconds because that's all we're talking about. Right. You can't even see it with the naked eye. And, they're like, right. 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 and you know, they wanted to go through all these throwing drills, and those can be good for you if necessary. But in these instances, it's all the timing of the lower half to set up the upper half. And that's right. a beautiful thing. I mean, we're making small. I mean, we're talking, you know, we're talking about what, four or five inches worth of a little bit, you know, a little bit more on, on their landing where they're, where they're actually getting out to and getting this back leg turned to help get them into a good strike. And then boom, their, their upper half all of a sudden timed up perfectly and they do jump. They, they will, we, we had a kid from uh, Ohio State that uh, got drafted this year. It's exactly what we did. His, his, he had plus curveball, he had all the stuff. It just fastball was a little weak. And he had two totally different, you see this, I'm sure, all the time, two totally different sets of mechanics. He had fastball right. mechanics right. and curveball mechanics. Yeah. We're curveball just mechanics were telling, great. We're just telling everybody what yeah. was wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't do that to Birdo. Don't, the same, like, don't, now, don't give anything to Birdo. You give Birdo any, that's, that's what right. I tell everybody, right? Like, my favorite part about Birdo is during COVID, he walks in and he's like, look, you've been pumping live ABs. How do we do that? And I was like, well, I just throw to you and we find more other guys that want to, and I, we just get, and so we've just kind of been building this idea, just inviting, inviting, inviting right. as many people. And then we even developed something even cooler that we really like because it's even less on me. We call it advanced BP. It's a short box at 50 oh, wow. feet and I'm thrilled. I love that. So I'm still Still on the mound, like, and I can, like, now, like, instead of 150 pitches, I'm throwing four to 500 pitches, but I'm not breaking, sure. like, 71 miles an hour. Sure. Absolutely. And so, like, I, I've got all seven pitches, so we can really, like, start playing. And so you see it. Like, Bertle got so many reps in competitive space that when he goes out, he almost hits 500 in the league than he was over there in, mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. That's and it's all. like, yeah, like, he was not surprised by any of the visual shapes that he saw. Right. You know, and I think that is just such an under like talked about component of it. But also to your point, that's why, like, if you do run into a Jedi, that's like literally like, what are you doing? Fastball, curveball? Like, I am so ready for this. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just 100 percent. Nobody even puts it together. Yeah. Most yeah, of right. the time it was curveball here. If I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's a floater. I'm smacking that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I talk, talk about like working with pitchers all the time. It's like I can see things and these adjustments. Right. Like, that's why I'm here now. Like, I want to see what Minshaw talk about throwing right so he can give me like more information i can see against pitchers right <laughs> especially with him i know all the, obviously all the cutter nation pitchers but then i go out and i see all the other pitchers right i got you know all the free agent lanes everything right and it's not that much different from like what i saw in the off season it's actually like the better pitching like the, the ones who do the stuff right okay okay all right he's good he has good ride on his fastball he's gonna have a good slider but if I see anything kind of his mechanics that I didn't like, I'm like, okay, that fastball is going to be softer. He's going to miss arm side. His curveball is going to be loopy. So anything that pops up, I can swing at. And it was, it was, it was very awesome to have that information in my head throughout the season. Yeah, and that that's cool that like you can give the faults of the pitcher to the oh, hitter, sure. and he'd be like, oh, dude, because like we we talk about it all the time, and we're getting ready to start a team. And like, there's so many of these kids that do this, yeah. right? So like, we're gonna do a 13 new team. And like, what I see happen, as soon as we get a run around first, we're gonna hit and run on a breaking ball count because he's gonna hang it. Like he does, his arm 
literally doesn't have enough time to get his fingers in front of it, and he gonna float something up there. And we're not gonna do the normal hit and run. Yeah. It's Bomba hit and run time. We we swing it. I listen. You know? I see it pro ball. I mean, you know, pitching coach last year and the year before at Indy, and you know, special assistant this year. But um, <clears throat> there's certain guys that come in from the pen and stuff, and we know um, who you, you you can look at it just like you're saying. You go, oh, this, yeah. Yeah, we, we know we're going to go pretty early in the count. Yeah. And this is going to be, a, you know, an absolute shit show. And there, there's guys, too. I think what really kills me is there's starters that as soon as they go from the stretch, it, it, mm. you know, it takes them oh. three, four, five pitches to get on. Hell, I've stole second and third already. Yeah, Fourth, for sure. second, got wild pitch to third because guys yeah. can't find it. Right. Um, and that's a big, big emphasis, especially in affiliate ball. We really made a real big emphasis of throwing from the stretch more often because there's statistics that said you could you could throw 60 percent in your game from the stretch i, I was going to say the same thing we do all run around first pin sometimes yeah. especially the younger kids because they just can't right. do it you know what i mean they need more, more experience and like we'll just mess with them yell run or you know and just like absolutely try to keep it yep. as real as possible inside of that and you just see that like you know we have little red zones and stuff when they throw it in there and we're putting you know yeah, we have two track mans now, so we've we've been able to use both sides of it. And so these kids that get to see this data now are like, look, not only did you hang it, but you lost 400 spin, which right. means it didn't go down very right. fast. And they're like, oh my god, yeah, I'm like, yeah that's it's above the belt. Significant. I'm destroy it. <laughs> yeah, like, you just threw an easy yeah. hit me ball right, right up there, dude. Look what yeah. Freddie Freeman did to Rich Hill's oh. stuff. That, that video angle was great too. Right? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 High and inside curveball, you know, seventy miles an hour. Boom. Our, our guys here hate it, but like, I love the Padres feed and everything from there. But we talk about the fucking hot dogs and the people in the stands more than the goddamn ball. <laughs> and I love that about the KBO. Did you happen to catch KBO? Yeah. Did you happen to see? Did you catch any broadcasts where ESPN? Yeah. Like, I watched like ten of them. Yep. And it was so I funny got up because early you could just to watch them. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't know what to talk about. Right. Right. Do you remember the KBO had that auto feed? It was like two slow motions that had it every time. It was the pitch, and then you got like ball release and right. ball flight, and then you got like the hitter yeah. taking it. And you just hear dead space through that whole thing. I'm like, yeah, y'all know, know what to do. Know what you should have been about. saying yeah. it was spinning at 2300. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I love to listen to that order of breath, like but then cool. there was all the silence yeah. when they didn't know what to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was so brutal to watch, you know? But I mean, that's, I think that's what we're trying to push over here. I mean, I've been working with TrackMan trying to get them to open up their API so we can live stream their data, yeah. you know, just like they're doing. Because I'm like, look, let me let me put this on the feed. Like, there's no reason to hide this data. And now we got, you know, we had a kid go to the Stanford camp the other day, and he's trying to make his name for himself. And we got TrackMan data, and he almost PRs against some kid throwing 92. <laughs> It's 198, 392, hits second base. And wow. he's like, look, the photo is he's looking at the jumbotron of himself, pointing at it, because he knows, like, oh, shit, like, I did that. I'm like, yeah, dude, like, that should have been happened 15 years ago. Like, golf, dude, come oh, on. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I, I'm glad we agree on the frustrations of, of – I just feel like we're talking to kindergartners, and that's not how golf yeah. creates their problem. No, no, no. They, they, so many more people into the game if we had metrics and everything, you know? Oh, absolutely, because it's, it's buy-in. And, you know, the 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 people that we're talking to on a regular basis, you know, these, you know, our, I think the bulk of our clients are probably in that <clears throat> 13 to 16 range. But, you know, they're all techno technologically savvy, you know. Right. They know every bit of it. And I, <clears throat> I'm always impressed with our guys that, you know, been with us for a little while. And they start really pointing out, you know, because our data are on our screens above us. We always call it, you're bowling for dollars. But, you know, they throw a pen, all they got to do is look up just yeah. a little bit, and the screens are right there. And to hear the organic conversations come from them about, oh, yeah, I felt this one, I did this, and that's why my spin was higher, and this is why this direction's starting to get better. And, you know, this, this broke later. Because, and I just love that they're owning the process. And not only that, but they're, they're deciphering the information as well. Because right. that's the hardest part. And then we started talking about that in the very early part of the pro podcast is, you know, all this data is like super Im Im important in the right context, but it has to be interpreted. And that's where we get lost a lot because there's a lot of misinterpretation. Um, there's a lot of people that still don't like it. You know, I worked with some guys that all they did was make fun of the data. Um, you know, they said, uh, 
use your eye soda, uh, things like that. And uh, we had a guy, uh, we had a coordinator who did not believe in that. I think he was pissed off because Garrett Cole was having a lot of success. And he had left the organization. And I'm really close with Brent Strom. And Brent told me what they did. And, mm. you know, that high four-seam fastball was really blowing people away. And the Astros told him, you're never allowed to throw another two-seamer here ever. And mm. you didn't need to. It was a point. Yeah. So yeah. I'll never forget being in the bullpen. And we, we had a guy that um, he, he ended up coming to me at Bristol. I had him all through extended. And then we went to short season together, throwing 100 miles an hour, up to 102, had 24 27 inches of vert, um, just incredible. And he was throwing literally at the armpits. We were training him to throw up. And the coordinator's just sitting there real smug going, gone, gone, gone. I'm thinking there's one guy alive that could hit that pitch out of the ballpark, and his name's Gary Sheffield. If you, you can hit 100 to 102 at the armpits straight up, then, you know, Oh, holy, holy shit. And we, we were, we're done in baseball then at that point. I mean, there's there's no reason to pitch. We'll just start underhanding. And, you know, he's just trying to make a point, and it was such bad taste. And it didn't correlate to what was really, yeah, I, really happening. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you say that. Um, you, know, Gary now, you know, there there's a bunch of discrepancies, I think, in the numbers, even what you said, because, like, we're not translating or, or even trying to make it sense. Right. And for what I see, and, and help me with this, because this is such a generalization, I see every, uh, over 2,000 is the benchmark, right, on your heater. Yeah. But every every 100 after that, I feel like is a step. It's like a, yeah. a, an upgrade from that, yeah. right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, and you so, can tell, like, if you get, I get in a box sometimes against our really good guys. And I did this all the time in affiliate ball. I would go down, and I would get in a box. And those guys that had, you could tell an 18-inch vert, Versus a 22 inch for, for example, right. you could tell, um, at least I could visually, I knew where I would want to start my swing and I knew whether I could get to that or not. And most of the time you couldn't. That's interesting. Yeah. It, it uh, you know, so it brings me to, there's, there's a controversial thing I want to ask you yeah. as well. I'm so happy. Like I said, I have some things. Um, and I'm going to say, it. I think we're measuring the ball wrong. Um, the velocity translation of miles per hour does not translate to feet per second, which I think is how you mess you measure missiles, yes. and it would explain how I blow eighty four, eighty five by guys, especially if we're in there. So it's, it's great that you said that because I, I think we're through phase one and phase two of of getting measurements and exploring the world of what's going on with the baseball. I read uh, just a few days ago, I do a lot of work with Baseball Cloud, and, and Ryan Reitzel and I have had some great conversations recently. We're also starting to look at, like, we're, we're talking about RPMs on the baseball. That's really not that efficient. We need to be looking at how many revolutions is it to the plate. And that's where the real, like you're saying, well, how come that guy gets strikes so many guys out on that curveball? It doesn't look that good. You know what I mean? Does, we need to get a little bit tighter data, a little bit more contextual data that's, that's subjective to what's happening. So I love yeah. what you're saying is let's narrow it down phase three. Let's get all the right stuff in place. Yeah. We, know, we know what the landscape looks like and we're all looking at stuff. Let's start down on the down. I say I just had this conversation with my interns. Let's dial down on the stuff that matters. Yeah. Yeah. We, let's find out what it is. Interesting, interesting process too, for sure, because – one of the things that one of the things that blew me away when I was in Mexico was um, I saw 101 pulled off the foul pole by a 40 year old and then a 19 year old, and the guy on the mound was kind of like Duvall from the Giants. He swing up guy with um, it had to have been low spin rate, but it was very flat, very flat. Sure. And and literally 101 in Mazatlan pulled off the foul pole, and I'm like, what right. is going on? Right. Like how? Does... And the and the guy walks in. He's a, he's still there. His name's Sal Soto. He goes by the Samurai. He's six six two eighty, <laughs> and he does not give a right. shit who how fast he's going. He does not give a shit. And he just he said to me, he said, I've been facing 100 since I was 17, and I was like, yeah. oh god, right. I have not, I haven't. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> you know, this is this is new to me, dude. 
And, and, you know, a after being around all of those people and seeing what's happening, they're telling me that my 94, 95, it's so much harder to hit than, especially with my cutter mm -hmm. and my slider mm -hmm. than, than anything else. And this dude refused to throw anything else but a fastball. Most baffling thing I'd ever seen up into that point was like, you literally just want to throw heaters. I don't understand. Yeah, there's a lot of art of judging deception. And I worked with a lot of guys way back in the day that were like super scouts. You know, Mike Berger, who was with a number of clubs and was really good with the Expos back then. And I think he hooked up, I can't remember the last few clubs he was with, but one of his biggest um, things he would put on his report was, and I'm trying to remember the name of exactly how he kind of phrased it, but his big thing was deception and how long you can hide the ball and how how you can confuse a hitter up until you get to your throwing window and throw their eyes off, throw their timing off. It was a really, really big thing. And honestly, I think with the metrics, I think we've kind of lost sight of that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think vision is, is very underrated. Mm -hmm. that. You know, like, and that was one of the things with the pro play AI that I was like, how are you measuring deception? And, the, and I remember asking Mike Stone, I think that's, and now he's with the Cubs, Yeah, right? he's with the Cubs. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, and he was like, oh, you just can't see the ball. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> this makes sense why the wiffle ball guys are just putting it behind their leg right. the whole time. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? right. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 words we say all the time, you know? Um, and, and, and for that right in there. So, you know, I think that, that I think if we explained it better, like I said, the, the, when I heard about vectors and all the things, the way they describe missiles, I was like, oh, these are just pitches. Right. Like, this is just yeah, oh, yeah. going Absolutely. up, things going down, you know? Yeah. Well, we, we had so funny. So the first year we moved into this new space, we had a, we had a, um, we're, we're right by General Electric that makes all the aviation engines here. And, and I was in the military, worked with, with aviation for, for some time and so i was really kind of curious about that and the the this particular dad was a nasa flight engineer like this guy is like incredibly intelligent and there's way more about propulsion and trajectory and stuff than i i'm, I'm just i'm smart but it's not that guy I'm yeah not, you're like i, I don't have okay. that on my business you're part, okay. right yeah. it's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. but because he was really curious at the time about our rap soda like how does that how does that measure those things how does it capture in a you know, I was doing my best to explain those things. And, um, he, you know, he really equated it to, like you're saying, to, like, almost like a missile. So, you know, like almost how you're going to send something through through space to get to a specific target area. So it's funny you're saying that because we, I had that conversation. It was way over my head. But maybe that's the way we really do need to be looking at it. Because yeah, we are. It, it made more sense because it described, like, there's things that, like I said, you just don't. Unless you have a track man and you can do what I do, we go to the side mm -hmm. angle and I can compare fastball, cutter, curve, slider, mm -hmm. and see that the cutter is the most devastating pitch because it moves later than any of the other right. ones, and then it backtracks on from right in there. Yeah, like we were assuming before that point. Correct. You know, right? Right. And so, like, it, it did make sense so after that information. I was like, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like my strikeout sequence to this day, I will not change it. Is cutter, cutter, fast slider. Like. Right. I live and die by it. A Rod, if you want some, I'll give it to you. You know what I mean? But like, it's it's because it's just an, it's really hard to hit. My my, I don't I don't you know I really wish when I was ninety four ninety six that I could have some data on what I was doing. But there was you know it just wasn't there. I remember coming home on like a Monday and there's a guy in San Diego that I happen to find out has a rap soto and I go throw a pen on it. And then, like, he can't even explain to me what it is. He just has the iPad, and he's just like, here you go. Right. And I'm like, what yeah. is this? Hey, there's a lot of that still going on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, for I sure. I get calls from a lot of college coaches because there's people in our area that have – they're not – they're not. I should say they're not, they're not similar to us because they don't have what we have. But they, they – <laughs> well, they have a pitching lab because they have a rap soda. I'm like, no, you, you can't put on a doctor's coat and call yourself a doctor. You need to stop that. <laughs> But that's what they do. They go, oh, well, here you go. Here's your results. Yeah. What do they mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and they have certifications, but they can't really help anybody, you know. So we right. can call it, you know, and they're, these kids are getting recruited. So the college coaches are like, hey, Mitch, is this one of your guys? I'm like, no, he's, you know, that's way on the other side of town. That's 45 minutes from here. Probably not one of our guys. And he's like, well, this guy's telling him blank, blank, blank about his stuff. And it doesn't really seem to make sense. I said, yeah, it's all made up. Mm -hmm.
that's all that's all bullshit that's just i know the kid doesn't know what i'm talking about so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say a bunch of stuff and he's gonna go man that guy's really smart you yeah. know <laughs> yeah for sure because there's exactly. there's a lot of that there's a ton of that and, 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 and this is why if you if you see me throw this is why i contend you just pump out videos of me throwing and doing stuff because it's like it's not easy right. to do right it's, it's not easy to process it and put it in you know, we have, I have figured out some things on being able to at least transfer the skill of my curveballs, my sliders, mm -hmm. and my cutters from right there. That's spin and creating movement has always been my thing. Sure. I'm a Maddox kid. I grew up just watching it. You know, went to Leo Mazzoni camp, did all those things, learned how to do that. Sure. You know, um, and so, like, even, like, laminar flow and, yeah. like, other words like that yeah. that just bother the shit out of me. Then I just go, no, side spin. No side spin like i'm over it i don't give a shit about the seams mm -hmm. anymore if i can watch a blitz ball go five fucking feet without any seams i don't think it's the seams <laughs> i think it's the energy of the ball pulling it you know but like you know we don't we just didn't have those yeah. things you know right. it was the, well, the conversations yeah, like I you had, said were so old school, i had zero you know? when i was playing and i just <clears throat> it was all feel for sure it was all feel. 100 percent. all feel you know? and tinkering and um that's one thing I love about throwing program every day with, with the pitching staff is <clears throat> I don't let guys throw with the same guy all year. Um, I don't think, I think it's important to break that up. Um, you know, I, I remember we had a couple of priority guys that really needed work on their changeup. And we had some guys that had outstanding changeups in our, in our squad, but in our organization too, that, um, you know, they're probably going to be org guys, but I would, say to them how come you're not throwing with the guy that's probably got the best change up here and, you, and your next step to get to the next level is just you being able to you know throw x amount per game what the organization wanted you to and they they're just used to throwing with their, their buddy and their homeboy it's like no you need to, you're going to toss with him he's going to teach you everything he knows about throwing a change up and his organic process is going to happen i'm going to watch i'm going to help you but you know i would say throwing programs is the, is the pitcher's batting practice don't waste it. Don't go out there and try to big league everybody. Just have a bunch of fun because it's your it's your work day. It's the only time you're getting an A work in, actually. So, but yeah, I, I, the organic process of learning those pitches and learning feel, learning terminology, saying you saying something and I say something, two words different, and all of a sudden Brad takes off. Yeah. And that means we've yeah. all won. Right. Yeah, right? Exactly. You know, yeah, we, John, we do John doesn't have to go out and say, oh, I fixed him. And Eric doesn't do that, you know. Oh, he's my guy. I fixed. No, it's we didn't do anything. We're we're teachers. That's what we're supposed to do. Right, right, and, right. Hundred percent. about whether Brad starts putting up better numbers and levels up. That's yeah. who's winning. That's who. That's who gets to take credit because he's the one in the freaking box. Right. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Hundred so, percent. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, couldn't couldn't agree more. That's we we call ourselves golf caddies, and this is a driving range with a bunch of toys. You know. I love that. We started using that. We. We found a, I, okay, here's another one for you. I have found a auto replay system through an iPad YouTube video and you watch it on an Apple TV and it gives you a seven second auto replay. And so we are doing pitch design live with kids where they get to work on the yep. top spin or whatever the pitches they're working on right in there. And it is wild to watch them in 30 minutes, like not have a clue. Yeah. Right? And then just be like, well, no, you're just supposed to hit that bottom bar. Like just. However you think sure. you can do it, just spin it, spin yeah. it down. Yeah. And then like the more spin you'll see in the video, it'll go down faster. And they're like, okay. And then you start watching them figure it out. And you're like, they're like, oh my God, this is so fun. I'm like, I know. That, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. Right here that fun and get better at this game and doing it. Yeah. Don exactly. Cooper said to me years and years ago, he said, Eric, the, the, the bullpen's the best laboratory in the world. Yeah. And you got to figure I, it out. Man, I, I just, I've never lost track of that. I, I just think that that's, Guys go, hey, what do you think? I said, try it. Try it. Try it. Yeah. I said, you are not, because I think there's a fear of, well, if I try it, I'll mess everything else up. Right. And that's, that's, exactly. that's bullshit. That's yeah. never going to happen. That's, it would be, it's, it's impossible, actually. Exactly. Yeah, once, once I figured out the cutter, um, which, by the way, for everybody watching, and you can go watch how I throw it on YouTube and from right in there, I grew up doing punt pass and kick and once i figured out i was throwing a football which was throwing a cutter like i just, i just ripped it and so like doing that whole process teaching all the kids that go through that and then watching them be successful as i go out it's really funny because you know cutters are i feel like 
are one a lost art of like nobody's te- like the people that matter aren't teaching it at a young enough age but like you get to the big leagues and everybody's got them right mm-hmm. but like it's mm-hmm. just a it's such an easy pitch to teach rather than the change up right because you can just stay through it as as you're doing instead of like having to feel feel the timing and you can just let that thing rip off your fingers and then you get a late action you know Yo, and you're like, no, no, absolutely no, yeah that's all you need you know for sure sure well, let's get into some of this stuff right here with our our uh, these beautiful two seam balls and this stuff right here. I've got I've got our bag. Um, I don't know where our stick went. I'll just see if I can find our stick. But I wanted I, we've been doing an awesome job. You know, I, I really appreciate catching up with you in there. I'm sure we could go yeah. for hours. I'm sure. I'll oh find yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Nobody's got to twist our arm to talk. About I know, this right? Guy, right? right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want me to talk about the thing that I do every day? Sure. Yeah. Um, I I, I really like the texture. This is my favorite. I'm a big one down yeah. ball guy. That's actually the only one I want. Yeah. Um, uh, Chapman, Chapman and one of his Cuban friends messed me up with the three pound cannonball. That's what they would throw for. Yeah. And so like, that's where my first introduction to weighted ball was. And like just yeah. standing with it, just like ripping my yeah. shoulder down. Well, they're built like you know? skyscrapers too, so they can handle that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> you know, and uh, I'm still waiting. Uh, we have a bunch of theories like um, I still there's no social media started in in the in right. Cuba. There's no documentaries on how they've been throwing a hundred since the seventies. Sure. Right. Like where right. where is all like I just saw something on YouTube of like I talk baseball or one of those awesome channels that could show the history of how America gave Cuba the game and Cuba gave the Dominicans the game. And I'm like, all right, that, that makes sense that too. That would be awesome. I would love to watch that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I'll, I'll see if I can find it from under there. Sure. But it was an sure. awesome. Like it was like it was like I think it was titled some like why are the Dominicans winning and I was like okay well uh, this is exactly what I saw let me let me jump over here and see what see what it is, um, so you know this this beautiful thing right here right you've created something that I feel like this is weird to say but but like you know and you know this because where you're at but like I'm a Florida kid and so like when I got over here and didn't feel the mush- moisture on the ball and the leather mm-hmm. felt different mm-hmm. I was confused right. right it was the first time that I had to like figure out bowler's grip pine yeah. tar you know yeah every, all of the secrets right just to be able to hold it this feels moistury like it actually yeah. feels like I have some tap yeah. to it right um you're not going to give the secret what it's made of but you know everybody needs to know like this has to feel comfortable and this is by far one of the most comfortable ones that i've felt and you can feel the weight of it it feels it gives you a nice feeling especially when you get into layback you know it gives you a little bit extra feedback on your hand and your fingers what what made you go here what made you decide to jump in on this guy well we you know we bought <clears throat> and, and still do have you know driveline balls at our, our academy but we started i think uh probably about a year ago, we, we just really struggled. Number one, we were getting pissed off because we have, you know, we just like, we got so many kids that come in anywhere from 50 to 85 kids a day, throwing and throwing, throwing. So we go, we were going through a lot of material. We were going through a lot of plyo balls because, you know, we're using them at a probably 80 times higher rate than a normal person. Um, so, you know, they're going to break. I mean, no ball is going to last forever, but um, we went to our, I guess it would be considered a competitor now, but we went to a seam uh, plyo that we couldn't get to last more than 90 days. Uh, totally different feel, very squishy. The the seams didn't feel right, and it was made out of a recycled, or appears to be a recycled material that just doesn't really hold up. Um, and they were pretty expensive. So my son and I were in the car, and you know he had some sets, and he's like, Dad, he goes, I, I've, I've broken the, the red and the white, um, this is my third set, and they only warranty so many. And I said, like, you know what? I wonder if we could do it. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, let's try it. And it took us months. I mean, I've learned more about materials and how they get bonded, and I, I just never thought I would ever be yeah. in that realm. I, I really honestly did not. I, I, I just I, – I was really looking at how we could honestly fix it for us first. Right. So we had prototypes made, and I had to go to my guys. I had to go to our guys that uh, that use them on a regular basis, and we were we got them. And you know, some, so many of our pro guys are college, high school dudes, and they were just floored with the texture. They're like, man, this feels great in my hand. I love the seams. I love how it feels, and they liked that it was firmer 
than a lot of the other balls. And then we started doing some homework with some of ASME's um, uh, tests that they have done, some of their studies about grip. And, and we had talked about, you know, when that when MLB got rid of, it cracked down, I should say, not got rid of, it cracked down on, you know, the tack, that we started seeing some a rise in, in injuries and elbow injuries because right. the balls were too slick. And then we found out through ASME's study, and kind of not necessarily make a leap of logic, but it would be far better for people to throw a little bit harder of a plyo ball that actually has seams so it doesn't slip out of their hands and will protect their elbows. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're doing our own study now that we've released these, but we've got guys that throw on a consistent basis that have had um, in- injury, not just to say injuries, but elbow flare-ups over time. So we're going we're gonna to see how that works out. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have to do. I, I experienced that with the driveline ball, the slick driveline ball. Mm-hmm. I, I remember I was demonstrating with. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Cordell Drain. Cordell Green. Um, he's the natural ball player. He's six nine. He's up in Seattle. Um, he's a throwing guy, um, but he's got. He's like ninety nine. I think he's waiting for an MLB contract. Yeah. Like, wow. He's an unreal human. Yeah. But he just figured it out on his own. But he's enormous. Yeah. Like. He, he he can throw it out from his knees over yeah. 300 foot fence. Jesus, that's awesome. Yeah, give me those. Um, I'd love that. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so like his stuff when his Tommy John rehab that he had he ended up having that he failed his physical, and so um, it, it was an interesting process because what he ended up doing was going under load on his whole rehab process instead of overload, and now he's like anti anything over five. Wow, months. that's incredible. Yeah, and so it's interesting because, like, he got back, I think it was, like, eight or nine months. He was already back to 97, 98. Now, granted, the strength training and the other stuff he's doing went through the roof, and he hasn't released anything yeah. yet. I need to reach out to him and find out. But, like, it just made me think about that whole process, the same thing. But that was one of the things that at his place, I remember, like, doing a demonstration of the ball and right. feeling it slip, and then my forearm lit up, my flexors. Right. And I remember being like, well, this is new. Yeah. I have not, you know, I throw this one pound ball all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. And it, maybe my hand was sweaty or whatever it was and to yep. that. But, like, yeah, it's it's interesting because we really see a process as we go yeah. that you need, to, you need to make sure that things are secure. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, that brings us into a whole other thing about the thumb, right? Is it, right. are you sure are tucked? Right. You know, is it right. is it out there? Pedro, I mean, Pedro used to hold that freaking Way ball out there. like that. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how you Eight do that, long man. fingers, yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. Like, what, are you just, are you just barely holding the damn thing, you know? So I, I see the process of, of that as well. And, and, you know, you bring up a lot of stuff that, it, it, once again, you know, we have doctors that are saying we have Tommy John, but nobody can actually tell me. When I yeah. asked Dr. Andrews and I asked the people at UCSD when I did the study, I'm like, how do you tear your UCL? And they're like, well, we don't actually know. I was like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. You don't even know? Yeah. I'm like, we're fixing it, but you don't even know? And they're like, yeah, well, we think it gets longer. I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. 2023, we don't even have a freaking guess. Yeah. Not, you know, and, and I get yeah. it. Doctors don't want to guess and go from right in there, but the whole thing cracks me up, you know? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, that, that's one of the reasons why we came up with the ball. I, I think it, it's, it's just... In our mind, I guess it's curing a lot of ills. You know, it's very durable. It feels good. Guys like throwing it. And, and we've got guys that toss with them. I mean, you can go out and toss with the white or the red easily. Um, I guess if you want to toss with the green, if you're, if you're, if you're John Sintes, you can. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I just got a really good feedback overall. It just keeps coming back. Like, man, these are, these are the best ones we ever had in our hand. Like, this, this could be industry changing. I said, well, that, that's great. I mean, you know, we – it just took us a long time to get a manufacturer. It took us a long time to get it right. And it took us a long time to get the colors right. You know, they're yeah, the green. You, so nailed, much it. Good to it. you nailed it with the green. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the guys love the, the the black one, the white, the red, and then they like throwing in the purple and the green. And and you know, getting those things right was was really important to us. So we um, we love the feedback. We we love that we're, they're selling. They're they're doing really well. And and I I, I think it'll overtake some of the others in the industry over time because they're we just, we just got to get into more people's hands. And the pro feedback, especially this winter, will be just tremendous. A lot of guys are just going to train with them full time and continue to put it out on their feeds. And so and I appreciate that a great deal. So um, we've got a couple of uh, major organizations uh, that are youth organizations in this country in the country that are looking at ordering two and three hundred sets for their entire organization so wow. 
lets us know that they're going to get in team hands and individual hands that, that really need them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting thing to see where we're at now because there is so, like we said, I mean, what, maybe 15 years ago, there was barely anything. Barely. You know what I mean? And now there's so much stuff that's out yep. there and the industry's grown so much. And, you know, every time I go to, the, you know, me, I got to take Birdo to the ABCA. And like, I've been hyping this thing up and I'm like, I don't even know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. We barely, we didn't even go to one like speaker thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and I like, he looked at it and he's like, I was like, you got to do it once. You got to go like see the outfield thing or whatever. He was there for 10 minutes and then came over to the pitching yeah. one. And he was like, I, I couldn't handle that. I was like, I get it. I understand. Yeah. yeah. You know, from right, right in there. Yeah. But like, it is such a cool experience. I wish they like, I was, I was telling someone, one of, one of our parents ended up like registering under our organization and then they went mm -hmm. and they were like, why don't they do one of these like open to the public too? And I'm like, I have no idea. That's a really good answer. question. Like, you know, yeah. like, like why are why is this only a coach's thing? This doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I remember going to the very first one I ever went to was in Nashville, and it was in 2001, I believe, 2000 or 2001, and there wasn't thousands of coaches there. Oh. Oh yeah, that was wild. This past one, like it was sold out. Yeah. All the people there, you know I what I mean. Thomas Sorda, yeah, had a, had a fifteen minute conversation with Thomas Sorda because you could. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you exactly. if you went to Nashville and Thomas Sorda was there, God rest his soul, you, there'd be hundreds of people surrounding him. You know what I mean? You couldn't get to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean that that is the my favorite part. You know, you see all these people online and doing stuff and then like right now yep. we can have real conversations. I have to spend yeah, I think day. I think we should definitely try to collab on that pitching one like that and like yep. try to find a facility in Dallas if you're if you're going out there. I, I do have I have two friends out there okay. that, that we were talking about doing the same thing for. But I think it would be great to do our own like just, you know, like win, Wednesday or something like that and like tell just, me I'm in. I'll I'll, you know, I'll do it. I, because it'd be, it'd be good for this too, oh, right? Like you can promote yeah. this and you go into yeah. it, you know, we can have a conversation. Because like what I want to do is like my favorite thing is like Berto and I mic each other up and then we like talk about the at-bats as it goes. And like sure. that's my favorite way of teaching yeah. these kids of like, look, dude, he started his hands, right? Like that means he was right? on it. You know, I got do your, your question is, is do you double down and go back in there or do you change it and go someone else, you right. know? And, and they, look at like, the feedback the All Star Game got when oh, the players oh, were mic'd up. Right. Oh, yeah. People were like, "Holy, holy crap! Why couldn't they do this all the time?" Right. Uh, I would love to be able to listen to what these people are actually thinking about and doing, and how they're reading swings and what looking at it. You know? Yeah. Because exactly. like, well, I, I do understand there's an art to it, and some people don't want to give away the secrets and stuff. But right. Once again, it pushes the game forward. You yeah. know? Yeah. You have to sacrifice a little for the for the end to justify the means. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You try exactly. out the uh, the uh, velo activation stick. I did. You know what? And and um, maybe it was a little too fresh for me, but I got it going. It was really stiff. You have to as yeah. we go. So you I, really I forgot to send you a note. You have to break no. it in a little. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, push it dude, I was stomach. strong, man, and it's so hard. And then one of our college guys got it. And he's like, "What was wrong with you?" I was like, and I was watching him, and he was yeah, getting yeah, it. I was yeah. like, it you must have needed to get broken. Very... Okay. So one of the things we found, and I we still use it. We love the shoulder tube. Don't get me wrong. I I, I know the guys that make it, I, I, and we, we love it. But the complaint was that you could eat, you could mini, mini, sorry, you could manipulate it. Say that fast five times. You can manipulate it a little too easy. You can make it dance too easy, and they can't travel with it. Right. You can't take it on a plane. You can't put it in your bag bag. It takes a you know, it's awkward to put in the back of the bus. I understand all that. So we found a way to make the handle disconnect and we came up with our own and um that's the number one feedback that we get everywhere like oh my god i love this like the guys put it in their bat bag because broken apart it's the same size as a bat and they they put it in the other side of their bat bag and there's now you have no excuse not to travel and have your activation and recovery tool with you yeah exactly. and i think that's going to be it's, it's a, revolutionary for I'm, our game like i i really wish i had that when i was in mexico um, it, it would have, it would have handled the whole process, you know, and, and I was, a, you know, once I figured out that I was a double bad guy, you know, oh. I need that catcher shit right, yeah, to, right, yeah. to get wherever I got to go. Once we started eliminating all those things, that's where, you know, it really changed the process for it, you know? Yeah. I appreciate you guys trying this out for us. That means a lot to me. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what, uh, what the results are, but we, we spent a lot of time trying to put better things in, in, in ball players' hands that are only going to help them. So 
Yeah, that's that's exactly. You know, and we'll talk more later about other stuff that we can do with Ulster right here. But I'm a big fan. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's fun to see. You know, uh, you know, other guys in the industry trying to not wait for Rawlings or East right. or Wilson to like, mm-hmm. do something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even yeah. then, they're gonna put the string in it with the rope. And I'm, now I'm going. What are we doing? What it's is like this? we talked about in the beginning. Gary, we're willing to write the check. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. exactly. You know, the R and D. And then actually having the product made and taking a risk requires a pretty significant amount of money. You got to be willing to write the check. Yeah, those people sure. aren't. You know, they want yeah. to talk about it. Hey, I got an idea. Yeah, and I'm sure they do. And there's a lot of great ideas out there, but you got to be able to write the check to get it out there. And um, yeah, I think it's worth it. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. What were you going to say, well, dude, Brad? This is... Oh no, I was saying that that's well. One to your point about writing the check. It's like the same thing with like pro ball and chasing indie ball. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that to do the stuff and you're like oh i wish i had opportunities well there's opportunities out there right but sometimes most of the time just got to pay for them yeah and travel and do all that but what else what i was going to say earlier is that eric i don't know if you know this but i'm actually in cincinnati right now yeah. i was at your i was at your place yesterday and oh, i didn't I know you, that yeah. yeah i didn't know you were at my place yeah so i got to try i was like oh of course they're gonna have the two seam balls here so i got to try them out throw oh, them great up and everything and it was great and i'm actually going there like right after this as oh, soon as awesome. we get off see you there oh. i'll see you there i am too yeah no mike shoot i might jump off this call right now then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know we'll definitely have to do something for sure and 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 like i said it would be really fun to set up because that like every time we do live at bat somewhere or do something i want to see how much technology can i get at once yeah. you know for what we're doing right. right and that's like what we're trying to do every time you know we had um, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of yellow they wouldn't face anyone live I'm, I'm yeah, right here. Like we had this yellow jacket system which was an alternate video system to the stalker pro oh, 2s okay that would allow me to take that feed and then throw it into obs studio which is the streaming thing okay and then i could put velo and spin rate on my live oh that's feed. awesome yeah yeah that would now, be great that company crashed and burned but it is you know <laughs> for about a month <laughs> for about a month it was i was like dude we're the only one <laughs> That in all the training we get velo and spin rate, <laughs> and then like it just stopped working. And I was like, "What happened?" And they're like, oh, "It just got too expensive." I was like, "I was trying to get you guys to freaking get some signups." They never like just. I get it. You know, same thing, right? You know, yeah. you get so invested, yeah. things happen in business. I totally understand that they were. It wasn't their primary. Oh know, right, move, right, yeah, know, sure. right. So like, I was just pumped that we had somebody because like I love the stalker to death, but. They're a cop radar system. They don't give any rats poop about anything in baseball. Right. You know what I mean? So I would talk to them at spin rate to, oh, to their Yeah. I was like, What? That's not what they yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hundred percent. Yeah. And they I even went to their uh when the uh, not this Nashville, but the Nashville Ford, I think twenty twenty Nashville. Um I broke their iPad like in the thing when they were trying to show me how to get it to work. I was like, okay, this is the problem that I have. And I go in, connect it, do it. I go, watch this. I zoom out just a little bit and I throw a ball and it turns off. And they're like, we didn't know that happened. And I was like, (laughs) dude, I've been crashing your app for like two months, dude. Like this is killing me, Yeah, you know? And they were like, oh, we had no, I was like, I sent you an email. I called your customer (laughs) service number. I'm just happy I'm here talking into the engineers, you know? So like they didn't even think about things like auto capture and stuff from right in there too. They're like, why would you need that? I was like, I don't know. Some people take a little longer in their delivery. Yeah. I would want to see more. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's just, it was a really weird process to say the least. But I mean, I, that's, that was like me understanding the big business of what's going on with all of these companies as well. Right. So, right. Well, dude, this has been great. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Well, obviously we'll do this again. You know, if you ever have any ideas or people that you'd like to bring on and chat on here, I'm sure we could go sure. all freaking day about all this stuff. And, you know, let me know if you have any questions or, or need some help with that Tommy John thing, because I am for okay. sure intrigued on that idea yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, I'll you start know? asking. That'd be great, because I, I, it's been it's been a really good roundtable of a lot of ideas and, and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, just learning more and more about the orthopedic side and, um, you know, try to help. We, we It's funny, we meet a lot of our clients that have had Tommy John after, you know, we very rarely do we have anybody in house that's ever needed one. We, we meet them, we get referred to by the doctor's office. Hey, you need to go see the guys at OBSA. It's like, well, shit, we would like to met him a year ago. Maybe we could have prevented, maybe we don't know, right, right, but maybe we could have prevented right, right. him, you know? Right. So 
But yeah, absolutely. Well, Would love I, to do that. I could say you could because I know you probably care more about their arms than their coaches do. You know well, what I'm saying? 100%. You know what I'm that's saying? Why, like, I, when, these, when these kids are getting abused, I mean, really, and that's what it is. I go, is your coach going to lay next to you on the table and have Tommy John surgery with you? Yeah. Because he's got to yeah, win. It, it, it happens way too often where they leave you know, a facility like us, and then they go to high school, throw seven days a week, long toss seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Nobody's watching anything in the warm-up because yes. coach is talking in the office or yep. whatever he's doing. Yep. And then you, and then my this is my favorite day in college baseball. And then you sit in the outfield, you shag for two and a half hours, and then he calls you for a bullpen a little bit later, and somehow you have to refigure out how to get hot right. and throw the worst pen Absolutely. of your life. Absolutely. Happens all the time. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, that anymore, we gotta baseball. Please. Gotta change that. Yeah, we gotta change. That. Sounds good. Well, thank, thank you so much. You. Um, please follow um, Eric. He's got all kinds of stuff. Two seams. Follow them for this. Yep. He's got his Ohio baseball science academy right. out there in Cincinnati. Burrow's yep. gonna go over there. Probably vibe with you guys a little bit more. Yep. But I appreciate everything. Thank you so much. We'll chat. Soon. Thank you. Appreciate. It. Take care. Yeah. See you.